And welcome again, the start of a new league season, and it seems the start of a new era in professional football, where referees are now more determined than ever to stamp down hard on any form of violent play, back to the full by the Football League. Uh, in yesterday's Manchester City Leeds game, we got a fair example of what is to come when four men were booked. By Alan Oakes' head, Miller gives it back to him and he gives a good pass to Davis. Miller takes it on, three men converging on him, and Rainey takes it off his toe. And into the book goes Hunter. Doyle is going to be booked for this. Two fouls inside 60 seconds and the notebook is out. Quite legitimate tactics. The ball is in play. Come and get it. And City have got it. And Charlton losing his temper. Hunter steps in. And Jack Charlton is going to be booked. And it looks as though Lee is booked as well. Yes, a warning for all professionals there, and we'll take a closer look at those incidents later on. But we go swinging into action today with goals from three First Division games. Our main match, West Ham against West Brom. Straight at best. And Hughes, a nasty one just over the goal. Manchester City against Leeds. Good header by Davis. Miller trying to get at it. Booth is up there too. Lee! And a marvellous save by Sprake. And Derby County against Manchester United. And Stepney losing it, winning it again from O'Hare. Great bit of goalkeeping. A real thriller, that one at Derby yesterday. We also talked to Don Howe, formerly with Arsenal, now manager of West Bromwich Albion. Analysis, as ever, from Jimmy Hill. And a look at your letters as well. So, another busy programme. Let's make a start now at Upton Park yesterday. West Ham against West Bromwich Albion and a 27,000 crowd glad to see the start of another new season. Opening in sunshine, but with a strong wind blowing from left to right. Uh, the West Ham team today, led as always by Bobby Moore, has Tommy Taylor wearing the number 10 shirt and playing in midfield. Best and Robson to do a lot of the front running. Another chance for young John Eris at number 7. As for West Bromwich Albion, well, their skipper, John Kay, has to whip up a side that was beaten by Colchester in the Watney final last week. Asa Hartford is injured, and Alan Merrick, a midfield player, is at number 11. Aston and Brown, prompted by Bobby Hope, could well be the real threat to West Ham United. Two strikers who should be prominent, Jeff Hurst of West Ham, wearing, incidentally, new green boots, which he says are a lucky omen. He's worn them once before and scored a hat-trick at Dunfermline. And then for West Brom, there's Tony Brown, top scorer in the first division last season with 28. Something there for new manager Don Howe to build on. We wait now for referee Tommy Dawes of Norwich. So the first kick of a new season when hopes everywhere are high and it's West Ham defending the goal to our right who get us away. Claret shirts with the blue sleeves, West Bromwich Albion in the blue and white stripes. And this is where it all begins to count. Between two sides who really didn't distinguish themselves in the first division last season, West Ham who finished 20th, one above the safety level, and West Bromwich Albion who finished 17th, one point ahead of West Ham. Johnny Ayres now for West Ham. And the throw given to West Bromwich Albion. Oh, and Bonds really took it in the back of the head there. And Mr. Dawes surely will have a word with the number 11, Alan Merrick. That really was a nasty piece of play there by the West Bromwich man. And Billy Bonds certainly felt it. So it'll be West Ham's free kick. And it'll be John McDowell with it. Best aiming to get underneath it, but it was big John Wilde who got it away. Bobby Moore, Taylor, Robson. Towards Best, and Hurst was going in too. But effective with the head of John Kay that just squirmed that over the head of Hurst. And to safety for West Bromwich Albion. Hurst really going in fast on that one. And West Ham's throw again. Billy Bonds once more. Again a longish one. Hurst taking a push in the back from Kay. And Wilson finally to plant it into touch. Once more Bonds with the throw. Finding his skipper Bobby Moore. To Lampard. Robson again over on the left, but Robson playing it firmly forward towards Clyde Best. Hughes to get it away. Taylor in fact stopping that with his hand. 
Tommy Dawes waited to see whether there would be any advantage to West Bromwich, and when he found there wasn't, he blew up. So Jim Coombs, Merrick, Harris, Hurst, allowed a surprising amount of room there, although West Brom closed in very quickly indeed. Taylor, Harris, a little push through there for Best, and Best has got uh, Kay with him, but Best still getting it across there to West Brom and Albion goal, Robson, he'll want to turn it back quickly. Straight onto the hands of Hughes and a free kick to West Ham United just outside that Albion area. Well, a good piece of uh, pacey play by Clyde Best, getting the best, of, getting the better of uh, Kay, and across that Albion goal. It'll be Moore to take the free kick, but wanting Saget a little further away and uh, Tony Brown too, I would think. Tommy Dawes will firmly measure this out. Now, will he get them back those last two or three yards? He wants them to hurry, and it's in his own hands because they can always be cautioned for it. Moore now with the free kick, curling towards that far post. Coombs has lost it, but wild to get it away. Stevenson. An offside given against Clyde Best by Tommy Dawes, who really was right on the spot. Saget turning that on well. Lampard looks as though he might put his defence in a bit of trouble. This will be Cantello. Cantello doing very well indeed, but Ferguson guarding that near post, as he had to do. Lencantillo. <laughs> Robson. All played on very neatly first time there for Hurst. And Kay can only put it as far as Ares. Ares to take on uh, the number two. And now it'll come to Robson. And into the side netting. <laughs> and a goal kick. Lampard, Merrick to Hughes. Bonds getting in there to Eris. Back to McDowell. Long and high. And Best and Robson, the only two West Ham men are up, and Robson gets ahead to it. Best, can he also do something over his own head? A bit of quick thinking there by Clyde Best. And an example, really, how two men attacking with a fair bit of determination and flair can cause problems for four and five men in defence. But nothing more serious than this goal kick to West Bromwich Albion and Jim Coombs with it. Astle swooping low, but Stevenson for West Ham, who against the wind have had far the better of things so far, and here's Clyde Best leaving it for Hurst. Can Hurst get a shot in? No, it was blocked at the very last by Wilde, and West Ham got a corner. The moment interesting to see that Best and Robson are really the front runners, and Hurst, if anything, is doing uh, a lot by coming from deeper positions. Here's the corner taken by Eris. Hurst not getting ahead to it. Bonds just getting ahead to that one. Eris, can he cross it again? But it's too hard. He really had to snatch at it. Young Johnny Eris, only 18. And in fact, as I say, he weighs nine stone and stands only five foot seven. A real lightweight, but quite a prospect. <laughs> Barrel barging contest there between Stevenson and uh, Astor. Stevenson, the guilty one, pushing into the back of the number nine here. And Albion's free kick. <laughs> Kay with a kick. And Ferguson to catch it. No, 
Now Best versus Kay, and Kay with the advantage. Robson with the throw. Bonds. Robson. Played there for McDowell. Hurst. Robson. West Ham up in some strength now. Best. And Hurst again. Oh, a nice little drag back by Hurst. And Bonds slipping when least he wanted to, when he was just lining up a shot. And Cantello to bring it away now for West Bromwich Albion. Brown with Hope going outside him. Hope a long cross towards Astor and Lampard must get that one for West Ham. Just nodding it far enough to give other men to come, uh, time to come back and help him. And a corner given. I think there was the faint impression that it might have uh, gone off Astle last, but uh, the linesman was right there. And the corner given. And Tony Brown, top scorer in the first division last season with 28. England cap as well to take it for West Bromwich Albion. Straight at best. And Hughes, a nasty one just over the goal. That really had Ferguson stretching. From the number two, Lyndon Hughes, hit with the outside of his right boot and swerving all the way in the wind. Testing Ferguson in that West Ham goal to the full. Well, finger, uh, Ferguson's fingertips did the right sort of job. And here's Brown with another corner. And again, it's best to get it away. And again, it comes out of Hughes. But Albion's throw. Merrick. And McDowell losing that one in the air, but Stevenson was behind him. Hope to dink it again. Suck it, hoping to fasten on it. But Lampard away this time for West Ham. Suck it still in there in the thick of it. Brown to blast one, but uh, well wide. And so Ferguson with the goal kick for West Ham. 11 minutes to go to half-time. Foul on Clyde Best by John Kay. Already been uh, cautioned twice this season, John Kay. In so-called friendlies. Bobby Moore with the free kick. And Saget not fully 10 yards away a look of injured innocence from the uh, West Bromwich Albion player and a long kick there by Bobby Moore now Hurst can he take it from best and do something with it back to uh, Taylor dinked on again for Bonds but Bonds is offside Billy Bonds Astle off in pursuit and McDowell with him. And the kick given against Jeff Astle. Now Bobby Moore. Swept wide again to Lampard. Best. A chance to touch it off for Hurst. But Kay was coming in very quickly, not really giving Hurst any sort of chance. Cantello taking too long and bowled out of it by Robson. A long ball there from Taylor to look for Ares. And West Bromwich Albion's throw. <laughs> Stevenson miscuing that one to Suggett. Can Suggett get a shot in and down goes Ferguson once more. Taylor playing that nicely for McDowell of all people turning up on the left hand side of the field with Robson outside him quick cross there towards Clyde Best Best getting a hit to it and Coombs grabbing it as Hurst closed in and a foul given against Clyde Best he must have been pushing into Kay as he went for that one with his head
Harris. With McDowell going along outside him, but uh, McDowell has taken a couple of defenders and given Harris a bit of room. Best now to nod it on. Play on, says the referee, as the crowd begin to feel that something was happening to Best as he went for that ball, but Tommy Dawes said no. And here's a good break here for Brown, a chance now for West Bromwich Albion. This is it, Albion have scored. A tremendous breakaway, totally unexpected. Smiles of triumph there from Tony Brown. And he really has got off the mark very quickly again in this new season. A long ball that really left that West Ham defence square and flat-footed. And the inquests are going on, Brown racing through. And Albion ahead. Six minutes to go to half-time. And Tony Brown carries on where he left off last season. Bonds, McDowell. I suppose what comfort there is for West Ham. They've had more of the game with the wind against them. They'll have the wind at their backs, or they should in the second half. As Moore now finds Lampard. Robson. And a deep one there towards Hurst, but Hurst can't get to it with his head, and Kay can. And Wilson completes the clearance. Astle. Moore. A nod to Taylor. No handball, says Tommy Dawes. And Cantello taking a little too long. And Robson in quickly for West Ham. Bobby Moore now. Hurst. Bonds. A floater towards Clyde Best. Best can't get ahead to it. Aries can. And Kay now to thump that one away for West Bromwich Albion. Good, strong, experienced defender, John Kay. Now Hurst. Harris. Tried to cut that in for Billy Bonds. And a little luckily for West Ham, it comes to Tommy Taylor. Harris again. Moore. Taylor. Body of our Ferguson in the Albion half of the field now as Bobby Moore comes forward. Hurst with Robson outside him. That's the ball for Bobby for Brian Robson. Curl across the goal to Best. And Best couldn't quite get above it. If he'd been a yard over to his right and he could have jumped and headed it downwards, that could have been 1 1 because Best was unmarked. And you can see the inquest there with John Kay leading him in that Albion defence. West Ham, if anything, proving that if you pile men forward, you're always likely to create a chance for yourself. <laughs> also significant, though, that for all the fact that West Ham have had more of the game, in fact, it's Ferguson who's had to bring out one particularly good save and one that really called for something extra as well. But here come the Albion again, and Ferguson once more in action for West Ham. More. Taylor. And Best, can Best flick this one on? No, he can't, because somehow that Albion defence reorganised itself at the very last moment to get it away. Ares, Robson, Ares again, and a flick there now. What about Hurst's left foot? Flick back across that goal, and Robson straight into the arms once more of Coombs. Ares brushed aside there as uh, Albion take it away through Wilson as though Ares really didn't exist. And now the game with a lot of life and fire to it as Hope now takes it up for the Albion. Curling across that goal and Suggett trying to get there before Moore. Astle with a shot and offside given against uh, Tony Brown. As we come now towards half-time then the game really has livened up. With Albion, this one goal ahead scored by the man you saw a moment there, the number 10, Tony Brown. West Ham will have good reason, I suppose, to remember their last match here against West Bromwich Albion. Last Good Friday when West Ham won 2-1, a victory that uh, virtually assured them of safety in the first division. And on that day, incidentally, I seem to remember, they were a goal down at half-time, West Ham. And then the man who's got the ball at the moment, Brian Robson, scored a goal. Jimmy Greaves, who's retired, scored another one, and West Ham won. Free kick to uh, West Ham. 
into injury time and there can't be very much of it at the end of the uh, first half Moore to take it and plenty of Albion players are there but Clyde Best finding Billy Bonds now can Bonds hammer one across Plus, can he get in? No he can't the very last seconds and it's uh, Hughes who gets it away Bonds again and a throw Referee Tommy Dawes looking hard at one watch and then another. Longish throw, Hurst trying to backhead it. Ayres now, can Ayres do something across that goal? Oh, and Coombs just grabbing that before Best could get it. As the whistle goes with that long clearance out of defence, for half-time, with West Bromwich Albion into the lead at half-time, with the goal scored by this fella, Tony Brown, Still to come on the big match for you to enjoy this afternoon. Highlights of Derby County against Manchester United. Manchester City against Leeds United. But the half-time score here at West Ham is West Ham United nil, West Bromwich Albion 1. We shall be back with you in just a couple of minutes. So the boot of Jeff Astle waiting to get us away at the start of the second half. And away we go. West Bromwich Albion now then defending the goal to our right. This one goal up scored by Tony Brown. And now very much, if anything, with the wind against them. And Cantello now in possession for the Albion. Hope. Try one to swing one with the outside of his boot. Albion, in fact, who have won on two of their last four occasions here. Well, they only had one away win in the whole of last season, and that was that controversial match of all places, Leeds United. Wilson badly misjudging that one, and Wilde forced to give away the corner. Another example of how this wind is playing tricks out there. Harris with the corner for West Ham. Floating under that bar, and Coombs in a lot of trouble, swinging on that crossbar. Floated in under there by uh, young Johnny Harris. So Ayres to take another corner. Pulled out a little more, almost getting through to Taylor. Lampard, can he hammer one? He can! Oh, my goodness! Coombs is a little lucky there. That must have been swinging, and Coombs saw it at the last moment and grabbed it from Frank Lampard. McDowell. Beating Hope. Hope coming back for some more. Flicked on there towards Best. Bonds to hammer that one just over the Albion bar. Always very dangerous, Billy Bonds, lurking on the edge of that area. Nice build up there by West Ham. Uh, made in the first place by the adventure of young John McDowell, their number two. Coombs with a kick for the Albion. Bonds again. Now Hurst. Now can Hurst let one go? Not a vintage Hurst shot by any means. Astor winning that one in the air. Merrick, Hope. Another long ball. This time again, finding Tony Brown across that goal, and that way he nearly was number two for the Albion. As again, West Ham were caught a little square and flat-footed in that defence. Sharpness of Tony Brown. A good long ball out of defence, though, by Bobby Hope, I think it was. Oh. 
Saget. For Brown, and Brown well stopped there by Lampard, and there we had McDowell falling, and very nearly uh, Astel taking advantage of it. Hope now for West Bromwich Albion. Played that beautifully wide, no, for Merrick. Can Merrick turn it across the goal there? It's a corner. So just a fraction over a quarter of an hour left. And it's not often that uh, West Bromwich Albion have broken out of defence in the whole of this match. But they're a goal up from their one real break in the first half. And now they have this corner, which Bobby Hope will take for them. Curling again, and my goodness, that very late caught Ferguson out by the near post. He had to punch it away for another corner. Curling in by that near post. So Hope again. And again, Ferguson looking for it, and kicked off the line by McDowell. But in fact, there was an infringement there. I think it was Wilde who got ahead to it. McDowell, in fact, very acrobatically off the line. All to no avail, although McDowell wasn't to know it. And Ferguson with the kick. Albion's throw. Best, who's come away from the striking role for a moment. Taylor. McDowell and Ares, in fact, leaving it to each other. Now it's John Ares. Shaken off Suggett. Showing a little more confidence now, but that one nodded away by Kay. Billy Bonds getting uh, ahead to it. Kay also getting ahead to it. Taylor. And Hughes. And Taylor into touch for a throw to the Albion. Astle. Another throw to the Albion. And a slow hand clap beginning to uh, make itself heard. A bit early in the season for that, but there it is nonetheless as Tony Brown looks for now the second chance for West Bromwich Albion. Brown is through and somehow Ferguson stopped him. But now Suggy, can he get one in? Down he goes, and nothing is given. I think Albion expected a penalty, but nothing was given. Bonds. And Kay once more at the heart of that Albion defence to get it away. As far as Eris, Bonds again, Hurst. To Eris. He'll want to push it across first time, Eris. Well, he's got it across, but not nearly powerfully enough. And Kay, calmly back to Coombs. Another hard look at his watch by the referee. And Best really serving no useful purpose there, because uh, it's really taking up time that West Ham can't afford. And in fact, that is it. It's all over, and West Ham begin the season with a defeat. The only goal of the game, in fact, being scored for West Bromwich Albion in the first half by this man, Tony Brown. So the final score here at Upton Park is West Ham United 0, West Bromwich Albion 1. So West Ham were beaten, that's uh, a bad start for them, but still to come for you on the big match uh, programme today to enjoy. We have highlights of Manchester City against Leeds United, where four men were booked. Derby County against Manchester United, which was a real thriller. But now a word from the West Bromwich Albion manager, Don Howe, who must have been very pleased with his victory for his new club. And after the game yesterday, I asked for his reaction. Well, I'm pleased uh, in, in lots of ways. First of all, that... Uh the Albion have been notorious now for their poor away record and we've now played three, three away matches this season and won the three. So I'm happy about that and also success makes the players believe and I want them to believe in my ideas. You think you were worth your win today? Uh, it, it was a fairly even game. We had our chances, they had, they had theirs and we, not, we managed to get the one. How much do you think the wind affected the whole afternoon? Well, I think it affected it very much. 
uh, for instance, when you were kicking down the park, the balls were going away from the forwards, and it was difficult for them to get hold of it. And then in the, in the second half, when he was kicking against the wind, he was holding the ball up, and you couldn't get it through as yeah. quick as you'd like to get it through. You, in fact, were trying to play a lot of long balls in the second half, weren't you? Yes, well, I thought, I thought West Ham were playing just that little bit square, and I thought there's a, a little bit of room behind their defence, so if we could get the balls over the back of the defence, then our, our runners, and we've got three good runners up the front, could get after them. What basically did you think of West Ham today? Uh, I thought they did well. I thought they were unlucky, really. They were making their chances and missing them. Uh, it's a difficult thing for uh, another manager to criticise the opposing side. But you thought they were square when the goal was scored, obviously. I thought they were square at the back, but there's a lot of teams square at the back. What's your reaction to the victory at Arsenal today as well? 3-0 over Chelsea, that was yeah, a very that, good one today. That's a very good start. I'm glad for the lads, you know, and I'm glad for the club. It was... Uh, it was one of these things that happened in football, the old episode about me leaving in George and Brian Whitehouse. It's over and for God, I'm, I'm glad to say, and they've started off well and I'm pleased for them. Don Howe, thank you very much indeed. Thank God you. Bless, Don. Well, Don Howe there, wisely trying to heal what wounds may remain after his departure from Highbury to West Bromwich Albion in the summer. There's a view from West Bromwich Albion. Now let's turn to Jimmy Hill, back from his holiday. Well, in fact, Don Howe's talked about West Ham at the back, but I was more worried by two other things in the team. I was worried, really, by their lack of aggression up front. We were all hoping for a bright start to the season, but I don't think we really got it from them. Uh, Clive Best, to me, has physique, physique like Martin Chivers, and Martin Chivers has had to learn to use that physique to thrust defenders out of the way and make sure that he wins the ball. Jeff Hurst seems to me still to be lacking inspiration. It's not the Jeff Hurst that, that we really know and respect. And I would like to see those two players showing much more fight and fire, especially in view of the fact that West Ham pumped quite a lot of high balls up into the goal mouth. And also in the middle of the field, I think they lack a little bit of balance. Tommy Taylor did a reasonable job there, but I think he and Billy Bonds are too much of a muchness. Two tall, lanky players who can play football, but I'd like to see a crafty player like a Ronnie Boyce. Let's have a look at some of the dead ball movements. At times, not even those work for West Ham with one pass. And this, I think, is a sign of the times, a sign a little bit of the lack of confidence that still is in the team, a uh, hangover from last season. Here's a throw in from Billy Bonds to Jeff Hurst, and watch how not even the first throw goes to the man. Near post throw, two West Bromwich defenders there, Jeff Hurst stuck underneath it, not really jumping, not reading the flight of the ball, and not showing the determination to get up there. Now, a free kick, a dead ball movement, obviously rehearsed. You can see the way players are running to get into positions they've been trained to go in. Watch the chip. Hurst is round the wrong way. Nobody seems to be, know quite what's happening and is ready to challenge for that ball in the air. Tommy Taylor, in an, a, a difficult position for him, showed the ability to turn. He's now, remember, in the middle of the field, not facing the play all the while. There was a clever bit of skill which enabled him to get round and get the ball away. And we see the same kind of manoeuvre here. Round the wrong way, very delicate skill, and the passes are going off. But it really was the lack of balance in the middle of the field that worried me. I say I cry out for a Ronnie Bo Boyce or a player of his type. I think perhaps, although they were playing wide up front with Aris and Robson wide, uh, for me, I would like to have seen another player of craft in the middle of the field. The goal was an interesting one, showed two things, how well the referee sh played the advantage rule to bring it about, and, and secondly, if you leave an opening these days, it's soon filled. There's uh, Kay coming away with the ball. McDowell, who's chasing him now, is trying to hold him back. In fact, he does a pretty good job of it, but Kay does get the ball of the way, and the referee allows play to go on. Remember, McDowell is West Ham's right back. Bobby Hope's on the ball, and where is it pumped through? Straight into that position, with Brown lurking there, going between the defenders, as Donhouse said he caught them rather square. Beats the goalkeeper, that's last season's leading scorer in the league hailing the first goal of the season for him this season. All right, for West Brom, not so good for West Ham. I hope that in the next uh, week or so, they'll regain their confidence. I hope they'll put somebody in the middle of the field with that craft, and I want to see Jeff Hurst going and fighting with his old fire and Clive Best becoming something like a Martin Chivers. Well, the next match on the programme today is Manchester City against Leeds United, two sides who obviously must be very much in the reckoning when it comes to the championship this season. The pictures come from Granada Television, where your commentator is Gerald Sinstad, and Leeds are in the white shirts. Francis Lee. Meller is up front on his left. Davis. Meller has moved into the middle. The only man really forward for City. There's Meller. 
Trying to bring it down for Young. Young's left foot goes wide. Davis. Connor didn't make it. Giles. Belfit runs over it beautifully for Bremner. That was a lovely bit of football. Five minutes to go to half-time, plus whatever the referee adds on for dog time. Oaks. Young. Lee. Lee again, put through by Davis and still going. Took a dive in the end. He might have done better to fall when he first lost his balance. Lorimer, right across for Belfit's head, and he's found it, and over the top from Corrigan. Good, sharp, direct thrust there from Leeds. Neil Young to take the corner that he himself made. Second half, some great work by Sprake coming up, yeah, and the only goal of the game. Get at it. Booth is up there too. Lee, and a marvellous save by Sprake. A great deal is made of this man's shortcomings, and sometimes they are pretty spectacular, but you must set against them the fact that a save like that is within the compass of perhaps only three or four goalkeepers in the country. Maidley. Good deal of this second half, played at not much above walking pace. Quite a cool afternoon, nothing like the heat wave we so often get to coincide with the start of the season. Clark's header, and Lorimer here free. And turned in! Corrigan got his hands to it, but he couldn't keep it out. And Lorimer puts Leeds ahead. There goes the ball through. Clark's header and Lorimer streaking into the gap. Corrigan gets his hands to it. Book is there, but can't prevent it from going in. And so it is 1-0 to Leeds. That is precisely how it finished, uh, because it was in that match that four players were booked. And as we said at the start of the programme when we showed you those incidents, it's the start of a new era in the game when referees really are clamping down on anything remotely violent. A couple of those incidents now, and we look at them this time with Jimmy Hill. In fact, I'm quite convinced that last season, there's Mike Doyle doing the first of a couple of fouls which brought about his name being taken, but I'm convinced that last season he wouldn't have had his name taken for these two incidents. The second one comes up now and follows almost straight after it in the same area of the field. Watch from this throw-in and you'll see that his opponent makes space and he comes in and tackles him from behind. And remember, this is the kind of tackle that referees are trying to eliminate from British football. There it is. He, he tries to get through to the ball there, I think, with his left foot, but, and I think he's very surprised that the referee now stops the game and takes his name. And now we look at another player, one of the, another of those name takings, Norman Hunter. And it's interesting to note that if referees are going to be as severe as this, then I think in justice to the players, they must make sure they're right. Here in slow motion, Hunter goes for the ball, fractionally late, Davis comes down, and the name is taken for that foul. It's tight, but that was his decision. Mind you, there's also a school of thought that says that if the referees gave everything every week, in a couple of months they'd clear the whole business of violence in football up. I mean, even to the point of, say, giving six or seven penalties every game for everything that goes on in the penalty area, you'd get some unreal score lines. But the thought is that the professionals then would very soon get the message. Well, that's another point of view. And now we look at some of your letters. Uh, and first, that Leicester girl that beat uh, Liverpool in the charity shield last week. A whole shoal of letters from you saying that Steve Whitworth was offside when he scored the only goal of the game. Uh, David Bateson of El Michael Tapp of Cranbrook in Kent, Joe Danes of Clapton, uh, J.W. Gillings of Chadwell Heath, Robin Emery of Thornton Heath were amongst those who wrote. Let's look again at it. It gives us a chance to look at a very fine Leicester move that built up for this goal to show that uh, Jimmy Bloomfield really has got something to work on at Filbert Street. I think we counted nine passes uh, last week on the programme that led up to this goal without a Liverpool player touching it. The controversy comes a little later on and there goes young Steve Whitworth, number two, who's at the centre of it, making his overlap down the right. 
I suppose there might even be a slight doubt about whether he's offside or not uh, when he takes this pass, but that's not really what we're worrying about. He now can't stop himself, and in fact, although he pushes that ball across to Fern, he runs fractionally off the pitch. Clemens, you'll notice, is off the line, so there can't be two players between him and the goal, between uh, Whitworth and the goal. Whitworth returns and prods that ball in, and the goal was given. Uh, now, referees that I've spoken to today have said that, of course, if a player deliberately goes off the field, he must get permission to come back from the referee. Uh, but, of course, the referee must use his discretion when a player goes off, as Whitworth did there, quite involuntarily. I'm sure Whitworth didn't intend to go off. Uh, but I think our Hawkeye viewers might well have been right, and that that goal that decided the charity shield of 1971 could have been an offside goal. Many thanks before we go on from uh, both Jimmy and myself for all of you who sent cards to us uh, while you've been on holiday yourself. It's been a very nice touch. I hope you'll forgive me if I show you particularly this uh, marvellous football that I've got from all the children of Coney Hill School of West Wickham in Kent. I think there must be a Manchester United player on the front. I'm not quite sure what that would be on the back. And all sorts of messages in the middle. And it was a very nice touch indeed, so thank you to all the children of Coney Hill School. Now, Carol Hart of Reading wrote to me this week to say that I made her father hopping mad last week when I kept referring to the Arsenal. She says, Dad says it's just Arsenal. Well, I think he's right, and uh, I apologise to him. I checked with uh, Arsenal, in fact, and they gave me this little handbook from 1914-15 that says, The Arsenal Official Handbook. And I gather the story is that Herbert Chapman, who was the great manager of the Arsenal, changed the title in 1925 just to Arsenal because alphabetically he wanted Arsenal to be first in everything. And as someone at Highbury said to me this week, and now in every respect we're first with a double behind us. Incidentally, one little thing in that handbook that you might be interested to know is that you could in 1914-15 buy a gramophone for 35 shillings. An Arsenal season ticket cost £1.11 and the programmes that season were one penny. Now we take up some more action, and it's that thriller up at Derby yesterday between Manchester United and Derby County. Franco Farrell's first league match for Manchester United as manager. The ATV cameras were there, Hugh Johns is your commentator, and Derby are in white. Now Charlton breaking out, though. Law going through the middle. Again, the interception, a timely one from Todd. Kevin Hector. McGovern and again they're looking out for Hinton on the wing Hinton taking on Dunn number three getting the shot in oh, Hinton the power of the dig he carries in either foot we've seen so often here at Derby showing again that the old left foot can really clatter them Alex Stepney who missed a lot of the season last season came out of the side with an injury and let Jimmy Rimmer in and then found it difficult to get back in again. Played 22 games in the league, though. Touch on by Kidd. Webster's got a hurry. George Best is bearing down on him. Best and Webster. Oh, and a good try by Law. Corner off Robson. Georgie, Georgie Best turning on a sixpence deep on the left side and flicking that ball dangerously across the box. Corner kick expert, Bobby Charlton, the chap who broke Jack Rowley's goal-scoring record for Manchester United last season. It lasted for 14 and a half years. That's a good one, and again, Wignall having to give away the corner this time. Bobby Charlton now on 200 league goals for Manchester United. Far side of the box is Kidd. Law! That'll do! one nothing. Dennis Law as need a goal as you want to see. A fine combination. Bobby Charlton's corner. Brian Kidd back across the box. And there was Dennis Law, number 10, to flick it in. And so, Derby County. one nothing down. And this surely will give a certain, an uncertain Manchester United side a great deal of confidence. Hector... For Derby. And Stepney losing it, winning it again from O'Hare. Great bit of goalkeeping then by Stepney. Very difficult conditions. Greasy ball. Wonder if this is what Franco Farrell's been working at. Up at Old Trafford. Brian Kidd, number eight down there. Morgan, a good run. And a corner of Archie Gemmell. 
Well, it was a corner that produced the first goal for Manchester United. Ten minutes to go to half-time. The activity centred now on this chap, Bobby Charlton. Law! And it's number four! It's going! Alan Garland has scored it, coming in behind Law on the blind side of the entire Derby defence. Well, we said this might be another goal, and there's the chap who scored it. 2-0 to Manchester United. Charlton offering himself in the midfield area. But a great comeback by Derby County in the second half. Webster, Gemmell's midfield. But now he's marked up. Hector, time to turn. Must come right, surely. Wignall. Cross on the lob. Nobody on the challenge on the goalkeeper. Todd brought that down superbly. McGovern going in, so James stops it. Hinter. Archie Gemmell. Hinton, McGovern, on again for Hinton. If he can get his left foot there, and that little tiny figure of Tommy O'Neill stops it again. But still the cross ball. James. O'Neill in two minds then as to whether to try and stop it or let it go for the corner. Decides that the corner kick's probably a safer proposition. It's Robson over on the corner kick with Hinton. Or whether they'll go for a short one or whether Hinton will whack it into the middle. Away by Garling. Now George Best coming out. Only one man forward then for Ndoyema, Dennis Law. Todd coming forward. Hinton. Gimmel. And a whole array of red shirts for Derby to try and get through. Hector going in. James away clear. Manchester United throwing more and more men back to protect this 2-0 lead. Challenged by Wignall. And Hector, it's a goal, all right. The goal created for this chap, Hector, by the challenge of number eight, Fred Wignall, on the goalkeeper. The scoreline, 2-1 now. Hector going again. Can't go all the way on his own, surely. Taken down by Tommy O'Neill, just a yard outside the box. That's a free kick. The tiny number two has been having a pretty useful game here so far. May have given away what could be a very costly free kick. Derby traditionally have a lot of clever set-piece moves they organise from these sort of situations. That is when uh, the United forwards, number 10, law prominent amongst them, number 11, George Best, will allow this Derby free kick to be taken. Referee Pugh organising the wall, and Dennis Law is going to get booked. Dennis Law is going to get booked for not having gone ten yards from the ball when he was warned to do so. That's one of the strictnesses that we were expecting this season. No messing about once you've been told to go away from the ball and warned about it. If you refuse to go back, you're going to get booked, and Law is booked. The sun perking through here at the baseball ground now, and the rain eased into a very, very mild drizzle. Hector, breaking for Derby. Not a good ball. Best, the tackle coming from Hennessy. Good strong one, too. Hinton with space to work in. O'Hare up. Well, everybody gave the goal, the second derby goal, to Wignall, but looking at it again in slow motion now, there's a distinct possibility it could have been an own goal by Sadler. Here's Sadler, number six, going for it with Wignall, and it looks as though it's Sadler who gets the touch to put it past Alex Stepney. So there we are, our first league look at Manchester United under Franco Farrell. Jimmy, what did you think of them? 
Well, it's obvious even from that brief glimpse that Franco Farrell has put the accent back on defence. You could see uh, masses of Manchester United players strung across the penalty area there, trying to hold on to that lead. But numbers of players or not, they still show the same old weakness in the centre of the defence. Goalkeeper and main centre defenders have not been dominating in the air for the last five years. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Franco Farrell make his first startling transfer in that area of the team. Well, there we are. That's all from the big match today. Hope very much you've enjoyed it once again. Remember to join us again for On the Ball next Saturday lunchtime in uh, World of Sport. That's at 10 to 1. And the big match, of course, action-packed, as always, uh, next Sunday afternoon. Uh, we leave you, as ever, with a bit of action. And uh, it's a bit of action, I suppose, that will bring sadness to all West Ham fans. Uh, the one goal of the match there at Upton Park yesterday against West Bromwich Albion that, in fact, meant such a disappointing start to the new season for all West Ham fans. Play on, says the referee, as the crowd begin to feel that something was happening to best as he went for that ball but Tommy Dawes said no and here's a good break here for Brown and a chance now for West Bromwich Albion this is it Albion have scored